get this started. I'll edit. What happened to you? It's already running. How is this for our volume now? Okay. Uh, thank you all, all for coming. Uh, this is my <laughs> my second uh, performance of this type in my whole life. <laughs> I did one a couple of years ago at another senior facility, and I'm venturing to do the same thing here. And I hope it proves to be entertaining or uh, pleasant for you. Uh, I wanted to give you a little introduction about uh, my thinking about why I'm doing this. It's kind of a memorial for the piano. The piano is a dying institution to some extent in our culture because uh, 100, 150 years ago, everybody who could afford one had a piano. It was essential for your family entertainment and for entertaining your guests. Uh, you had no radio, no phonograph, uh, no source of entertainment except what you manufactured yourself. So the piano was essential. So uh, step forward about 100 years and what do you know? I'm seeing in the newspaper now that junkyards are full of, what? guess what, pianos. People no longer want to take up the space with their piano and they get rid of them because they have all these other forms of entertainment and the piano is not a, not essential. Besides, the children refuse to take piano lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the tradition is somewhat uh, dulled, if not wrong. So I'm from that generation where uh, I didn't take piano lessons very much, but I, I I've been playing the piano, as I've told people here, for uh, uh, about 80 years, and uh, mostly for my own entertainment. But I discovered that some other people uh, saw, liked what they heard, and I got into the idea of giving a performance like this. That's why I'm here, that's why you're here. Uh, by the way, the, uh, you know, the only place for a piano, I made a little list of where, where the piano belongs now. It, it uh, belongs in, uh, for, mostly for playing jazz, and it's in school, beer, ga beer gardens, and senior facilities. That's where you can find pianos now. So, uh, that, that's about where we're going. Uh, my first uh, I'm going to start out with uh, a series of piano pieces that were written for people's homes, uh, like I explained, and these were written by Edvard Grieg of Norway, some, uh, some place in the first half of the 19th century, maybe early in the second half. And this one is a nocturne, notturno, which uh, I'll be playing for you initially. As you may tell from the name, uh, a nocturne is designed to be peaceful music to help you go to sleep at night. <laughs> Hope it doesn't put you to sleep. <laughs>
my ear is at the piano. That sounded too loud for a night piece. And I think I'm going to close. Would others agree with me? I want to put this lid down. No, I have that off. We're going, to, we're going to stay in Norway uh, along, with, uh, <coughs> along with Edvard Grieg, and this is another entertainment piece. It's called An Impromptu Waltz. I don't think it was ever designed to be danced to, but rather to be listened to in somebody's living room.
getting a fair sized dose of uh, Edvard Greek today. <laughs> Next one, I, I wasn't quite sure whether to include or not because it's, uh, you know, it wasn't all ha happiness and joy that the composers back then wrote about. <clears throat> They also wrote about uh, all kinds of human experience, including homesickness. This uh, piece is called Homesickness. And, uh, so you can use your own imagination of why he called it this. Next thing, uh, next thing is still Greek, but this is meant uh, strictly for entertainment. 
<clears throat> it's called a scherzo, which means a playful piece of music. you're wondering about my uh, paperwork up here, uh, it has a simple explanation. Uh, I used to remember more music, now I have to use written music more to, uh, for music I might have remembered. So that's why I'm using, uh, throughout this program, written music. You're supposed to have fun with this, I won't guarantee it.
<clears throat> this next one I'm going to ask you to guess what it's about. It's more Greek than Norway. At this point, we're leaving Norway and going across the North Sea to Germany. Uh, the composer this time is Felix Mendelssohn. No, more or less the same period of time, <coughs> but uh, he seems to have been a traveler, and some of his some of his music was a, a mem memory of his uh, travels. Now, what I'm going to play is a couple what are, what are called Venetian boat songs, which mimic, <coughs> in his estimation, what it was like riding in the boat in, around uh, Venice. Uh, you'll find signals at time, like the, the boat is sending, sending signals. You also get signals of danger or uh, maybe near disaster at some point, and it gets a little exciting at points. It's a, it also has a, a lot of calmness.
Well, I'm dedicating this piece to uh, my daughter Sarah, who uh, the, the apogee of her piano career, I think, was may have been around this piece of music, which she played beautifully. Mm -hmm.
lights are over. <laughs> you still play them better than me. <laughs> You're in the 80 years. I know. Uh, let's renewing. A lesser known European reporter was Gabriel Fauré, a Frenchman who was also in mid 19th century. And uh, he, he has a, an odd sweetness to his style, not odd, but unusual sweetness to his style. And uh, I think we, we may hear some of that of what I play now. This is called an improvisation, which I take to mean that it's something that he ran off. Uh, before or after dinner one night, and he liked it, so he wrote it down. I think that's about how this was probably written. I forgot a piece of Greek. It was out of out of my order in my stack here. I'm going to go back to Greek now. Well, I think I, I, I played this for you. Which one is it? It's, a, it's the scherzo. Yeah, you yeah. 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 okay. yeah. okay. yeah. played it. Right. Okay. <laughs> We're moving to Spain. This is uh, a, full of a couple of Spanish dances, which uh, I, I fell in love with Spain and Spanish things when I was a teenager. And I thought that Spanish music was the greatest thing on earth. It's, that, it's kind of stayed with me ever since. And this is, uh, these are dances based on Spanish dance tunes that are not intended for dancing, but are rather for Salon Entertainment. This is called Andal Andalusa Andalusia. So it's apparently a, a southern style. It probably has some uh, kind of gypsy influence.
Some kind people offered a print pages for me, and I'm beginning to wish I had taken them on. I think he needs that stick. kind of a culture shock, we're going to move to France to some early uh, uh, music in the Debussy Ravel uh, tradition, but this is Eric Satie that you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, these are some piano pieces that he wrote uh, that uh, have become popular uh, among people like me anyway. They're, they're fun to play, 
and have a lot of, uh, 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 you'll, you'll see what you might find. Yeah, do you want your stick back? These, these pieces carry odd names. Gymnopédie, as near as I can, it's uh, 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 a children's gym. And, uh, those, what it has to do with children or a gym, but that's what uh, the composer named them. And the second group is called Nocien, which is even more uh, remote in its meaning. This seems to be related to the city of Knossos uh, on the uh, uh, on the Greek island of Crete, uh, which is very famous historically. I, and I've never found out what the real connection is.
The Gnosians are very s similar in their harmonics, but they're more elaborate and uh, a little more venturesome than the others. Uh, I find them more interesting. Well, the others are, the ones I just played, I think of as mood pieces. These have a little more interest, I think. <laughs>
on the floor above. Yeah. It's a, it's a kind of continuous piece. It has a flow all the way through. And, and you, uh, as one critic said, it's almost like there's a contest between the right hand and the left hand because the, one is playing the background and the other is playing the melody. But, uh, and they blend together all right, but you'll see it, it gets a little confusing. <laughs> disharmony and uh, uh, actually there's some disharmony woven into this if you listen each message each member each measure has a background of kind of clashing notes that you may hear as you go Thank you. 
you. That last piece is uh, the result of about five years practice on that single piece that I, I had to do to put it together. It's a pretty tough one. Oh, <laughs> Explain to, to us. Yeah. I didn't know what a gollywog was. Uh, I heard about gollywog cakewalk because I, I played this as a, as a kid on the piano. Uh, but I found out later that the gollywog was a toy very popular among European and English children. And they were very politically incorrect by medical, by modern standards. They were black dolls, so black playful figures uh, with uh, with bright eyes and uh, smiling faces and the, the children loved them and uh, they were very popular for some 30 or 40 years and then people began to object to their uh, racial implications and they disappeared.
That's the end of a little shepherd. So do we. Now this one, I, I started banging away at this one when I, when I was a kid. And I, I'm surprised that I, I still remember it partially. So I'm going to play it for you. Golly Watts, Kate You have to play shorter music now. <laughs> That's our program for today. Thank you for your... Thank you. Thank you.